Since the dawn of civilization itself, humans have always been interested in finding out what stuff is made out of. First came the ancient Greeks' five classical elements of earth, air, water, fire, and ether, which were ultimately replaced by Dmitri Mendeleev's periodic table of elements. J.J. Thompson discovered that atoms of the periodic table were not the fundamental building blocks of nature. They themselves were made out of three different types of subatomic particles. Even these subatomic particles were not the final layer of reality. Two of these subatomic particles could be split apart into even smaller buzzing entities called elementary particles. But what are these elementary particles? Why are they important? And are they truly the final layer of reality? To answer these questions, we're going on a journey together that will span the age of the universe from the beginning of time itself to the mouths of the darkest black holes and the guts of space. Are you ready for it? Scale of Elementary Particles Picture the average human. Around 1.7 meters tall, a human is made up of 78 organs, each of which is made up of at least one of four types of tissue. Each tissue is made out of countless cells. In total, scientists estimate that there are around 37.2 trillion cells in your body, excluding bacteria and other microorganisms that are living on you. If each cell were the size of a human, you would be tall as 20 Mount Everests. Each cell is made up of smaller structures known as organelles, and each has its own function. We talked more about each organelle and its function in a past video, linked in the video description below. Everything inside of the cell, including the organelles, is made up of macromolecules such as proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids, which themselves are joint chains of simpler micromolecules such as simple sugars, amino acids, and water. This is where biology meets chemistry. In turn, these molecules are made up of strings of atoms joined together by chemical bonds. We have also created a video on chemical bonds. Atoms themselves can be split apart even further. Every atom is made up of a densely packed positively charged nucleus and a cloud of orbiting negatively charged electrons. This nucleus is incredibly tiny compared to the atom, taking up less than 0.01% of the total volume, but it accounts for more than 99.99% of the atom's entire mass. At this point, chemistry officially becomes physics. The nucleus itself is made up of two different types of particles, the proton and the neutron. The proton and the neutron have similar masses to each other, but unlike the neutron, which has a neutral charge, the proton has a positive charge. Meanwhile, the electron is around 2,000 times less massive than the proton and neutrons. If protons and neutrons are the massive bowling balls, an electron would be about as heavy as a penny. Despite its incredibly small mass, electrons carry an equal but opposite electric charge as the proton. While the electron is fundamental, protons and neutrons can be split apart even further into smaller particles called quarks. Two types of quarks made up the proton, the up quark and the down quark. The proton contains two up quarks and one down quark, while the neutron contains one up quark and two down quarks. These three nanoscopic, almost infinitesimally small particles are essentially what the entire universe is made up of. But of course, it isn't that simple. The Standard Model of Particle Physics All elementary particles have three basic properties that define them. Their mass, spin, and electric charge. Think of them as the fingerprint of each particle. So this is what our new periodic table of fundamental particles should look like. Except it isn't. For an unknown reason, nature has decided to copy these three particles two times over to give rise to what is now called three generations of matter. Now instead of working with only two quarks, there are six quarks, named the up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom quarks. The incredible thing is that the three generations of quarks are identical to each other, except mass. For example, the up, charm, and top quarks have the same charge and spin, but their masses differ in orders of magnitude. A similar 
occurrence can be observed with the downstrange and bottom quarks. The brighter particles of the electrons are known as the muon and the tau, which, like the quarks, differ only in mass. Each of these three particles has a corresponding neutrino, known as the electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino, respectively. Neutrinos are similar to electrons and the cousins of electrons, except they are electrically neutral and have an extremely tiny, if not non-existent, mass, and a correspondingly tiny size. Because they rarely interact with matter, neutrinos are sometimes called ghost particles. 100 trillion neutrinos pass through your body every second. Scientists suspect that neutrinos may be the most abundant particles in the known universe. The three types of neutrinos are unique to each other and that when they interact with other particles, they only produce the particles that they are named after. For instance, the electron neutrino will only produce electrons, the muon neutrino will only produce muons, and the tau neutrino will only produce taus. Collectively, the electron, muon, tau, and their corresponding neutrinos are called leptons. Quarks and leptons are all of the matter particles in existence, and are sometimes called fermions. In the universe, however, there is another family of fundamental particles that we have not talked about yet, the force carrier particles. In nature, every interaction can be boiled down to four basic fundamental forces, whether it's shooting a basketball, shooting a bullet, or shooting a rocket, all actions can be described by four underlying building blocks. The four forces are gravity, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. We'll explain more about them in more detail later, but let's get a basic overview. Gravity is the force of attraction between any object with mass and energy, and the weakest of the four forces. The weak nuclear force, meanwhile, is the force responsible for nuclear decay. Through this process, particles can change from one to another. Electromagnetism is the force that occurs between charged particles. Light charges repel each other, while opposite charges attract each other. The strong nuclear force, the strongest of the four, is the force responsible for holding together protons and neutrons. Three of the four fundamental forces can be described by force-carrying particles, called gauge bosons. The gluon is responsible for the strong nuclear force, the photon for electromagnetism, and the W plus, W minus, and Z nil bosons for the weak nuclear force. While the gluon, photon, and the Z boson are all electrically neutral, the W bosons have respective positive and negative charges. So our new list of fundamental particles look like this, with the fermions and the gauge bosons. This model is called the standard model of particle physics, and until 2012, when a new particle was discovered, it was the most successful and complete model of the universe. Except for the fact that it is a complete lie. The History of Quantum Physics and Introduction to Quantum Field Theory the late 19th and early 20th century was arguably the most important time for physics. The new generation of bright minds was coming up with radical theories that completely changed ideas that have been around since Newton's time in the 17th century. Einstein wowed the world with his theory of relativity. Special Relativity, which was published in 1905, taught that space and time were no longer separate, but two sides of the same coin. And so were matter and energy. More precisely, for any object moving at a constant velocity, the laws of physics are applied in the same way as an object at rest. A decade later, Einstein published his general theory of relativity, which built onto special relativity by including gravity. In general relativity, Einstein theorized that the fabric of space-time could be bent by objects with great mass or energy, and this bending is what we experience as gravity. This was a profound leap in physics and all of science, as Einstein had essentially rewritten the traditional classical mechanical view of the universe. Essentially, he described a Newtonian gravitational force as an illusion. But the scientific revolution would not stop there. The study of matter at the smallest scales, called quantum mechanics, was formed around the time general relativity was published, 
completely changing how we looked at the world and overthrowing many theories held for granted. Rather than returning definite measurements that classical mechanics had, quantum mechanics worked closely with probabilities. Interestingly, this meant that in the quantum world, things could exist in multiple different states at the same time, which scientists now call superposition. Quantum literally means discrete and talks about the smallest unit of something. Quantum mechanics sought to answer many unanswered questions, such as whether light was a particle or a wave. In 1801, Thomas Young had supposedly answered the question by performing the double slit experiment. He cut two parallel slits onto a surface and shone light through both slits at the same time. The resulting diffraction pattern projected on a screen seemed to conclude that light was a wave. However, more recent discoveries, such as the photoelectric effect, seemed to suggest that light was made up of particles called photons, creating a contradiction. To solve this problem, physicists repeated the double slit experiment, this time with electrons, a known particle, rather than light. Scientists expected there to be two bands on the screen, as particles could only be in one place at a time. However, the resulting projection was another interference pattern, which seemed to suggest that electrons, too, were waves. This finally gave way to the wave-particle duality. Quantum entities exhibit both wave-like and particle-like behavior at the same time. All particles could now be described by corresponding wave function as well. There was a small catch, though. The position and momentum could not be both accurately predicted because of the wave-particle duality. This is called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. This conflicted with the classical view of the universe, which asserted that the universe was deterministic. For most calculations, the maths of converting a classical law into a quantum version could be done, which is how we now have a quantum mechanical calculations of electromagnetism, among other things. However, some other classical mechanical theories refuse to be quantized, like general relativity. To paint a better picture of our world, physicists came up with quantum field theory, which combines the principles of quantum mechanics and special relativity. While it was formally completed in the 20th century, Michael Faraday kicked it off in 1845. Faraday, the scientist who discovered electromagnetic induction and electrolysis, hypothesized that there was an invisible ocean-like continuum spread across the entire universe, which he called a field. He proposed that this field was the cause of electromagnetism, and it is always there, even when there are no objects there. For example, we know that the space between two magnets is not empty, but filled by what we now call the electromagnetic field. Quantum field theory took this a step further. What we see as particles and waves are not discrete quanta, but instead disturbances on the different quantum fields spread across the universe. Needless to say, this was a completely different take on reality than what the ancient Greeks or even the Victorians had imagined. Imagine a quantum field as a calm ocean that fills up the universe. When this ocean is ex excited or disturbed, though, it produces a quantum, like a particle. For example, when the electromagnetic field is disturbed, it will release a photon, the quantum of electromagnetism. The elegance of quantum field theory is that every single particle in the standard model is not the final layer of reality, but instead are disturbances upon their respective quantum fields. There is an up quark field, a bottom quark field, an electron field, and so on. Quantum fields do not just produce particles, they also produce antiparticles. Antiparticles have the same properties as their respective particles, except that they have opposite charges. For particles without electric charges, they are their own antiparticles. For example, the electron field produces both electrons and anti-electrons, sometimes called positrons, which have positive charges. Similarly, the up quark field can also produce an up antiquark, which also has an equal but opposite electric charge. Also, remember how we said that a new particle was discovered in 2012? This particle is called the Higgs boson, which is the particle related to the Higgs field. Interestingly, the Higgs field is responsible for giving other particles their mass. In other words, fields that interact with the Higgs field will have mass, while fields that do not interact with the Higgs field don't. This is why quarks have masses, while photons do not. The Higgs boson is the only boson that does not have a spin, which is why it's called a vector boson. So, according to the standard model, there are 12 matter fields and 5 force fields if we treat all types of gluons as the same, which interact with each other in different ways to produce everything known in the universe. 
Unfortunately, this leaves out one important force, gravity. Marrying gravity and tiny rubber bands, let's return to the standard model's force-carrying particles. The gluon is the particle related to the strong force, the W and Z bosons to the weak nuclear force, and the photon to the electromagnetic force. So why is there no particle or field associated with gravity? The answer is that gravity is simply incompatible with quantum physics. Remember, general relativity is a classical theory, while the standard model is a quantum mechanical one. The main problem with quantizing general relativity is that it describes a smooth, continuous, and predictable view of reality, while quantum mechanics describes random and probabilistic phenomena. Not to mention, general relativity is incomplete as it is unable to describe extremities such as black holes or the Big Bang. Nevertheless, physicists tried to invent a new particle called the graviton that would mediate gravity, but when they did, their mathematics broke down. Besides, there had been decades of experimentation to find the graviton, but all of them failed to produce any noticeable result. Unifying general relativity, and therefore gravity, with the standard model would be a step closer to a theory of everything, the ultimate dream of every physicist. If the theory of everything existed, it could predict absolutely anything happening in the universe in an equation. As a result, it has sparked a race to find a theory of quantum gravity. There are many ideas for solving quantum gravity, but here we'll focus on string theory. String theory takes a truly large leap in how we view the universe. We normally think of the particles in the standard model as zero-dimensional points because their calculations are so much easier. But this point-like property is one of the reasons why the existence of a graviton is a paradox. An infinite amount of energy has to be compressed into an infinitesimally small point. It's like a divide by zero error in the universe. String theory solved this problem. Rather than using points, string theorists use one-dimensional strings as the true building blocks of reality. These strings can vibrate at different frequencies, which cleanly produces different types of particles and different properties. Most importantly, string theory also accounts for gravity. It quickly graduated as a possible theory of everything. There's a small catch with string theory. String theory and its variants describe a universe with 9, or possibly even 10, spatial and 1 temporal dimension, which is inconsistent with our reality with its 3 spatial and 1 temporal dimensions. Physicists have mostly gotten rid of the problem by imagining these extra dimensions as being extremely curled up so that, at a certain scale, they appear to vanish. It's like how an overhead cable may look one-dimensional to a flying falcon, but three-dimensional to an ant crawling on it. Even when we get rid of the extra dimensions, however, string theory still opens up a new kind of worms. Because of its nature, string theory m returns many different solutions rather than one. There are somewhere around 10 to the 500 different solutions. This is now called the landscape problem, and it leads to other complications like the existence of a multiverse and lack of reliable experimentation. So string theory is still a nascent idea, and no theory of quantum gravity has been completed. Beyond the standard model, in the dark. Even without quantum gravity to worry about, the standard model is still not a theory of everything. There are still many things in the universe that the standard model can't describe. Dark matter and energy are examples of this. Less than 5% of everything in the universe is the ordinary matter that the standard model describes, according to calculations. This means that we only experience 5% of reality. Around 27% is something we call dark matter, which is probably some sort of exotic particle we can't see but has extremely strong gravity. And the other 68% is dark energy, which is a mysterious force that is accelerating the expansion of the universe. As of today, no theory or experiment has successfully described dark matter and energy. Conclusion In the end, Finding the final description of the universe is another reminder of the complexity and beauty of science and how the largest things are ultimately described by the simplest. Thank you for watching the Information Institute's first special video of 2023. If you've made it this far into the video, congratulations, you officially have completed an introduction to particle physics. 
There are several things to note about this video. To condense a dynamic, not fully understood and difficult subject into a single YouTube video, we had to simplify lots of complex topics and eliminate details. For example, we haven't gone into the other possible theories of everything, dived into the intricacies of string theory, described the three fundamental properties of elementary particles, or even mentioned Schrodinger's cat or the Large Hadron Collider. Moreover, the color, structure, shape, and symbol that represent different particles have all been simplified and modified for this video. View a photo of the actual standard model and peruse our bibliography in the links down in the video description below. You guessed it, we made it. The Information Institute will release the second special video of 2023, we worked overtime to produce not one, but two short documentaries on science this year. This time, we will dive into the space crushing and time wrinkling physics behind black holes, the single most powerful and mysterious objects in the universe. From its currently known anatomy, to its profound effects on its surroundings, to its birth, through its entire evolution and its eventual death, this special video will examine the stomachs that are never full. Join us this Christmas to watch the second special video of 2023.